Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game Onia and stand by while Bill Tendo is shitting his brains out right now. Literally his words. So, uh, we're hanging out here while he's doing that. I got the 3D printer going on in the background. I'll show you guys what I'm taking a look at, what I'm working on right now. Um, I'm working on a, a pedal, a 3D printed pedal for my arcades. And uh, let me pull this PDF up, see if you guys, see if I can share this with the group. I'm sorry, not the group, with the with the chat over here. What do I got for window? NVIDIA parts list. Let's take a look at this. So this is what, can you see this? I can't even tell. There we go. So this is what I am taking a look at here. Uh, Ray from RPEG Electronics sent this over to uh, myself in the group, uh, in a group chat that, we're, that we got going on. And uh, this is this is a pedal. For like on arcades that I'm working on, it's a 3D printed pedal, and it's gonna take one full day to print all these parts out. And at when it's done, it's supposed to look like this. So I know nothing about Arduino micros at all. I have not used one yet. I have not built my own Gun for IR. For those of you that don't know, Gun for IR uses Arduino micros um, to program their guns, so and their software. Uh, so this also uses an Arduino micro. And it uses one micro switch right here. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. There we go. So there it is. It's just one standard micro switch soldered to the Arduino and then out the back. And the 3D printer is printing the base of this right now. The base on a hyperspeed uh, print, because I have the hyperspeed upgrade kit for that machine, uh, is about a five and a half hour print just for the base. And on the top is a uh, <sighs> print. I hear Bill Tendo. On top is a four hour print. And then this piece right here is another four hour print. So it's about roughly 16 hours of print. <laughs> What's dude, up, man? How's that real, really? How's that shit? It was fucking rough, dude. Rough? <laughs> you have uh, or did you have the Chinese shit? <laughs> no, my. <clears throat> Hold or did on. you have the gumbo shits? Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Big pasta. Big pasta. You had the so, pasta shit. So shits. while I was spinning that wheel, <clears throat> uh, my wife was cooking and we special ordered this uh, pasta. Did you know they still invent new pastas? What do you mean they invent new pastas? So, like noodles? No, it's not a fucking noodle. God. All right, pretend for a Pasta's second. Pasta's a noodle. Pretend for a second you fucking Italian and not Polish, okay? We talking about the seriousness of pasta. Listen, right? y'all motherfuckers call ravioli pierogies. No, a ravioli and pierogi is different. It's the exact same fucking thing. Really? What's a what's a pierogi made out of? Pierogi's made out of dough with cheese in the middle of it. What's a ravioli? Dough with cheese in the middle of it. No, y'all have potatoes in y'all shit. No, we use cheese. It's farmer's cheese. Ain't nobody use potatoes in their shit. The people that's that what use a pierogi is. That's not a real fucking pierogi. That is a real pierogi. That is not a real pierogi. A real pierogi is cheese and chives. You can ask any Polak. And Dingus Day is on Monday. And you better believe I'm going to get in my fill of pierogies on Monday. Cheese and chives. It's farmer's oh, cheese and look, chives. With pierogi, also known as Polish dumplings. Learn how to make the Moorish Which is what Polish, a ravioli is. Polish it's a fucking Italian dumpling. filled with cheesy, creamy mashed potatoes served with the onion butter sauce. No. Are you Polish? No, I'm Did Italian. Did you grow up in a Polish household? No, I'm Italian. That's why I'm trying to tell you about delicious <laughs> pastas. This is why I'm trying to tell you about delicious pierogi that it ain't with fucking potatoes. <laughs> All right, anyways, so what kind of pasta did you have? Um, So, a new pasta. So this Dinosaur group, pasta? Huh? Dinosaur pasta? No, no. But uh, like dinosaur pasta, it is a new shape of pasta that has been patented. So, and I didn't even know you could do that. But so this food blogger um, spent two years designing what he considered to be the perfect pasta. It's a... Uh, it's like a quarter circle, and it's got ridges on one side and a channel down the back of it to hold the maximum amount of sauce, to have the best, uh, you know, when you bite into it, it's got a good feel to it. it it's, it's pretty good. It definitely holds the sauce better than any pasta I've ever had. Uh, his whole thing was 
fuck spaghetti. Why is it the most popular pasta when nothing sticks to spaghetti? You have to have a fork for your sauce and a fork for your uh, pasta. So it's a wonton with cheese. You're right. Whatever. Listen, so, listen. So I just anyway, want to say, I just want to say something real quick. You're perfect. What? I said, you're my perfect pasta. Thank you. <laughs> and you're my maybe your noodle pearly. holds that sauce. <laughs> that noodle, my noodle got the sauce, but, son. That's what's up. That's what's up. Listen, listen. It's all about the bro brotion. Yep. I almost wore my bro brotion hat tonight. This is this is my standard game but, only gear right here. But, with but I was listen. running late tonight, so I just hauled ass down here because I was in the bathroom. Anyway, listen, I I could. She made the pasta. She made out. she made delicious meatballs, and you know you can't have a good meatball without uh, beef and pork in it. But right, pork just jacks my stomach up. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I'm. It's just because I'm getting old. But bro, I got to have pork, ribs the other day. Pork sends me, bro. Dude, I love pork. Dude, I'm a Polish kid that grew up on pork, and you know, transferring over to being Judy to being Jewish, we don't eat pork. Uh, but I eat pork outside the house. But I got to have fucking ribs the other day. I ate a rack of ribs. Oh, I was in heaven, man! Fucking heaven. You got. We got to talk about the shirts. Let's talk about the shirts. Go right to it. You pull it up, baby. Oh, I was just setting it no, up. We don't right have to, to talk about it right now. No, go right to it, dude. You pull All it up. Right. Don't, don't dick tease All right. that pasta no. noodle. So, for people that are fans of the show, you guys are here with us every week. I did some new merch drops just for us on my website, Biltendo.com. We got Scuttlebutt's t-shirts now. I'm super proud of the Scuttlebutt shirt. Let's check Yo, that I kinda out. I kind of need that shirt. So, it comes in a couple different colors, and I had... Dude, I absolutely had to make one of them pink because I feel like it's just necessary. So what I did was I took the uh, the actual billboard from Scuttlebutts before it burnt down. And on the back, we got this right here. Where every night is a Monday morning. <laughs> so we have that Scuttlebutt shirt. And then we have one... Right here, it's the building with a no parking sign out front. So that's pretty cool. And Tabby's right. She ordered some uh, shirts from the website. Uh, she actually designed the Biltendo Pop and Controller uh, shirt and hoodie. She had designed those a while back for me. But um, okay. we have, we got, oh, of course we got the Retro Lizard logo t-shirt. Now it changes. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> oh shit, I better fix that. Yeah, you better before that fucking gets sold out. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's the a... introductory price. No, so, it's, uh, it's yeah. supposed to be $25. Anyway. Uh, oh, oh, here it is. Here's the that's where'd you get uh, models from? Oh, it, it comes with the website. Does Whatever. it? Yeah. Oh. Get okay. you a game only a shirt. That's what's up. I thought about doing the hashtag popsicle shirt. You should have. You got to do the hashtag popsicle. You should put hashtag popsicle on the back of that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you should. And the it, the retro lizard one, is my logo on the back or is it on the front? It's on the it's back, It's on the right? back. It's small on the front and it's also on, it's big on the back. There we go. It's That's like on the shirt where a shirt pocket would be. Story of my life. Small on the front, big in the back, baby. That's you. That's me. All about the ass. It's all about ass, man. Now I'm changing. The I want that. On, I got, dude. I want that shirt right now. I, you know, I'll dude. I'm gonna up. order a pink scuttlebutt shirt tonight. <laughs> I already ordered one. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. This is awesome. Billy Wright, scroll down. Order yourself a retro lizard shirt. All right. Just so is this is this is this officially live? Is this on the Bill Tendo website? Yeah, BillTendo.com. You can Bill get them right now. Is this this is what you've been working on for a few days? Excuse me, for a few days, right? Yeah, I've been working on some other stuff too. But yeah, we launched the merch <laughs> what like five days ago okay. or something. And so we got like this is the Bill Tendo pop shirt right here. That's the one Tabby designed, and that's the hoodie that goes with it. Uh Gameonia 
Obviously, that was our original thumbnail picture for everything. A play on Stankonia by Outcast. It's a Scuttlebutt shirt. This is the controller shirt. Another one that Tabby designed for me. Scuttlebutt's I, no parking. I, dude, I love our original um, Gameonia. So do I. So I do. do I. The reason we don't use that every week now um, is basically because. Uh, I was advised by our good friend Gamer Aimer that we need a different thumbnail each week to catch attention uh, because we have a lot, we have all our people that are cool as hell that are here every week. But then, you know, if it's the same thumbnail every week, other people that might subscribe to our channels might not watch it because it looks like the same video every week. Oh, I get it. Kind of like that's a mind trick, huh? Yeah, yeah. So the things we learn about streaming. Yeah, we got a couple more shirts here. This is from my upcoming Alpha Mod, which everybody knows about. That's the Bill Tendo show. Um, that's me and Mike Fink. We we're on season two now. And uh we want to Are you support. and Mike back? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um that that is uh streaming exclusively uh for audio on Spotify. And um, the video is on the Nintendo 64 Players and Collectors official YouTube channel now. Season one's on my Bill Tendo channel here, but season two is exclusively over there now. So Mike's recording live with you, or Mike's recording and he's yeah. going on YouTube with you now? It, yeah, he's on video now. <laughs> good for Mike, man. Good for Mike. I'm happy that he did that. He's, good making, for him, man. he's making big strides. But That's awesome. You know, we have a lot of friends and we want to support our friends. So just like we have Joel's Retro Lizard shirt, we have a Frank and Beans Inside shirt. We have Jiggy Look Back, who is one of the co-hosts of the official N64 Players and Collectors podcast. We have Sins, who mostly streams like Dragon Ball and uh, Pikmin games and stuff like that. And Craig, without a control games, who does a lot of stuff with me. That's dope. Yeah. And for... Oh. For people oh, watching, and obviously, Sega Kids are weird shirt. They're not that weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you anyway. need a black one though. You need a black oh, one. Oh, it comes. You can get it black. Look, but bam, bam. All right. All right. Anyway, I'm gonna it. I'm gonna uh, stop showing these shirts now because I'm I'm feeling like I'm pitching. Right. Well, we we're, we're, so what we're doing is we're showing we we Bill and I were talking earlier, and uh, I'm like, you know what? We should talk about what we've been working on during the week and what we have coming up and things like that. And this is actually something that Bill's been working on. So we're not exactly sales pitching to you guys. Um, in a way, it is, but in a way, it's not. It, but, right. In a right, way, it's, we're, it's we're a, showing you what it's we're. A what we got a, it's a little bit of a pitch because hey, I would love it if you fucking buy some shit from me. But at the end of the day, the truth is, I'm always. And Joel, too, we're always really excited about the stuff we're working on currently because yeah. um, we're always doing new stuff. And, uh, you know, we we feel like we had a talk the other day, like maybe we don't share that enough and we should share it more. Right. Exactly. Bill took the words right out of my mouth. He explained it way better than I ever could, man. So for a lot of people, you know, I have my work shirts, my retro lizard work shirts, and I've had a lot of people ask me about it. This is a fantastic opportunity for them to purchase a retro lizard shirt too. But not only that, dude, dude I got to get that scuttlebutt shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what, Joel? Fuck. Let's give away a scuttlebutt shirt tonight. Okay. Scuttlebutt shirt it is. Pink. <laughs> I mean, they could pick their color. So all of all of our shirts are available in uh this uh dark gray or white or black. Uh, except Scuttlebutts also has a pink shirt because I felt like it was appropriate. You know? Yeah, it totally was. I agree with that. Totally appropriate. Yeah. So that's dope as shit, man. Dope as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. What else you What else you got up your sleeve? You been working on anything else this week? You still working on the Alpha? Uh, or did you take alpha, a break? No. So my biggest problem with the Alpha is it is so time consuming, right? Oh, yeah. Um. So... This is not a joke. I offer my son a deal where uh, he he has a list to work from and he has the resources available to him. Basically, because we can't ROM dump the alpha. 
Each game has to be loaded and tested individually. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's why it's so time consuming because it takes about five minutes to put each game and test it and make sure it fires up. So I made a deal with my son. I'm like, hey, buddy, um, you haven't worked in like the last three weeks and rent's due on the rent's first. Due. <laughs> rent's due on the first. Dude, you're 25 years old. You know, rent's due. <laughs> Amy, um, motherfucker, right? And so I told him, I said, uh, you you load this thing up. Just keep putting games on it. I, You got a list. You got the resources. Just keep pumping the games onto it, and uh, I'll pay you per game, you know, a certain right. amount of dollars per game to put them on there. So it's going. It's going to take more time. I knew when uh, the consensus was that most people wanted a bunch of games on it instead of just available to them. That it was going to take months, and it is. Yeah, you know, it's uh, building these things are. It's a slow and steady process. You know, I I had a talk with my wife because it is probably the most labor and time intensive build I have ever done. Dude, imagine I I did that twenty terabyte. Yeah. Yeah. I've worked on that for like six or seven months straight, just making sure things worked, creating scripts, creating files, doing so much. You know, I, what? Actually, I actually had that drive in my personal arcade that I used to have. Uh -huh. I, made a, I made a wide body arcade one up and I had it in there and I worked on it from there just in my spare time on the weekends tinkering around. I did more tinkering than playing on that arcade. But yeah, it's it's so time consuming, isn't it? It, it's excessively time consuming. I mean, in the meantime, like, you know, I, I, I figured out what was wrong with the quest situation because, um, apparently those handhelds have a really specific design, so specific that you can only use two types of micro SD cards. It won't read other manufacturers. And what are you? Are you using the Sandisk? I am now Sandisk Ultra. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what I always use. So maybe that's why I never really had an issue with them. Right, right. So did, so, did you end up backing it up with Win32? It's back. It's backed up. With Win32? Did you use Win32? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. So backstory here for everybody watching. Bill Tendo, he's got the Quest, right? And he's been trying to work on cloning it or um, backing it up so that he can create the new SD card for the next one that he's working on. And he was having a little issues with it. Um and he he ended up using Win32. Win32 is an image is an image backer upper and an image cloner. So that's where that's what he's discussing here right now is that he, he used Win32 to back up his image. Did you use Belina Etcher to flash it? Absolutely, I did. And your first test worked out. Yes. Oh yes. Yes. So I ordered. Yes. What I did was I ordered a bunch of uh, cards from Amazon, Sandisk Ultra cards. Um, and I actually went up in size instead of, or, I'm 128s, but I ordered 256s. Right. Um, just because some of these really push the boundaries. Um, so like this other thing I've been working on in the meantime, which I told you about, and it, it didn't take long because I had a prototype build a while back and then I got a hold of a, a, a pie the other day. And um, I you was got looking at three, the OG. <laughs> it's a 3v plus but you know i'm always telling people that like i want to i've been it's been in my head for a long time before i got with you and started selling the uh retro lizard on the website and all that um i was really looking for a to go along with that a budget build you know not everybody has 250 350 to uh right pay, pay for a build so i wanted a, a a build that was worth the money that was under $200. And so um, I finished up a pie build that I had tried to do like two years ago called the black box. Okay. And that, di that didn't work out because at the time pies were $150 plus the labor plus controller, you know? And yeah. I, and so I tried to go the other way and use like the Libre and the orange pie, which are compatible, but they're not the same. And I couldn't get things to run the way I wanted to. So basically what I did was I took some of the work that was put into that and I put it into uh, a 3B plus pie build. Right. So um, that's actually complete. I 
like Matt said, I put it in the Bill Tendo Labs group today. Just a quick scroll through. Um, the N64, like any Pi build, is going to be spotty. Um, oh, Ban N64 does not run on Pi 3. Banjo Kazooie ran, runs fantastic. Mario 64 is going to run fantastic. When you get into later games, like Conker's Bad Fur Day, you're going to have issues. Right. That, that being said, I played Spyro the Dragon for two and a half hours on PS1 the other day. Smooth as fuck, no problem. On the Pi 3, right? On the Pi 3, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. PS1 so, plays fantastically on Pi 3. Yeah, so... um. Yeah, so that's a, that's a complete build, and basically I ordered some pies, some cases, the cards that I bought for the quests that were uh, not quite, that wouldn't work in them because they weren't the right brand, I just used a pie, started cloning them off for for this build. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. It's a, it's a nice little build. It'll be a budget build. Um, this has Virtual Boy on it. The Biltendo X Retro Lizard has both Virtual Boy and Saturn. Now, does he mean an actual box? So Facebook, I can't see the name. So Facebook oh, user, I to pull Facebook. <laughs> and that's okay. Facebook user, are you talking about the actual box for the Virtual Boy and the Sega Saturn, the OEM box, or are you talking about a box that has those games on it? Because we got that. We got that all day. So just need a box for display right so he's just looking he's just looking for a box man ebay that bitch um yeah ebay that bitch we can get i can get you japanese sega saturn boxes all day long if you look over my shoulder i got a japanese sega saturn box right there yeah yeah i got four of them over there actually i got a virtual boy i got a virtual boy and um where the fuck is it where the fuck is my virtual boy I got a Virtual Boy in a Blockbuster case. That's uh, Corey Here. Bunting. Is it? Here, check this out. I don't know if I ever showed you this. Let me get my helmet off. Let me have my helmet. My uh, headphones off. Your helmet? He's talking about a helmet. I don't know what the fuck. Uh, what's the best Wii that we make? Nikki, good question. That would be the Wii Xeno mod. So I started out with my what I call the basic mod now, which has been upgraded. And then I moved on to the Ultra mod. The Ultra mod was actually my best seller. So and I think – hold Sorry, Joel. No, but ahead, I, sorry. I felt like uh, the Ultra mod hit the perfect price point. Those went for like $250. Uh, and it had all the way up to GameCube on it. And then I moved into the Broly mod, which had 300 Wii games plus all of the uh, GameCube games. But I've discontinued the Ultra Mod and the Broly Mod and replaced them both with the Biltendo Xeno Wii Mod because that has all GameCube games on it, just like the Broly did and Ultra did. But it's also got GameCube hacks on it. Uh, the Wii on this one is the complete Wii collection plus Wii hacks. And we've upgraded the basic systems as well. It's no longer just nin uh, Nintendo up to that point. We have plenty of Sega on there, Coleco Village and, and Television Atari, a bunch of other stuff too. So uh, the Xeno mod, if you're looking for a Wii mod, is absolutely the best thing on the market. It comes with a, a four terabyte external hard drive. So you can't beat that, dude. The Wii, the Wii library alone is almost two terabytes. Yeah, it is. And, and the uh, GameCube library uh, comes oh, in gosh. at almost a terabyte. Yeah. So check this out. All right. Virtual Boy Blockbuster case. With my Virtual Boy in it, not the Virtual Boy that came with it. A little story behind this. I was at the, when I went to the Cleveland Gaming Convention, um, mm -hmm. somebody was selling one of these, right? <clears throat> so let's. This is my personal virtual boy that's inside it, too. All right. So at the Cleveland Gaming Convention, somebody was selling one of these uh, with a virtual boy inside it for $600. But uh, the virtual boy that was inside it did not have a Blockbuster sticker on it. Because, you know, most consoles that came from Blockbuster had the sticker on it, right? Property of Blockbuster. So I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know. I don't feel like paying $600 for something that doesn't have a property of Blockbuster sticker on the console. So I came home, I looked on eBay, I found an empty case, 
And I'm like, I look, I started looking around and researching to even see if the Virtual Boys came with that sticker on it or not. And I couldn't find anything that confirmed whether it did or it didn't. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to buy the case. I bought the case for 200 bucks. What? I got, yeah, I got the case. That's for a really fucking good deal for that case. That's all right. I thought the same thing too. And the sticker's in pretty decent condition also. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stick my Virtual Boy in it. I would be so, happy with that. Totally was happy with that, man. Totally was. I, I'd fuck that. Uh, you're not fucking my virtual boy case. You're gonna get that black foam shit all over your dick, and it's not gonna be right. I don't care. That shit ain't. That shit's not gonna come off for days. <laughs> I tried it. It's all right. I'll be it's, all right. It's more comfortable than the Doom bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's briefly touch on the group fundraiser tonight, man. Yeah, talk about like, it. We we don't have to get heavy into it. Um, I feel like uh. We've said enough about um, Kelly's situation. Did you meet the goal? Dude, uh, so the situation... Give me two seconds. I'll I'll get us there. We're going to go on a journey at this point. It's a little journey. Tell me a Um, story. Sorry. So, one of our group members, we have, what, over 16,000 group members now. I think we're at like 16,500, somewhere up in there. Which is crazy. Yeah, it is. And I remember back, obviously, because I started the group and I remember everybody, uh, you know, when right. most people joined. And, um, you know, Kelly was one of those people that joined around the same time as Curtis and Eric Melvin and people that are really prominent in the group and very active in the group and have been for a long time. And uh, we probably had about 500 people at that point. They... If if that they were in the first five hundred, right. so Kelly and I Kelly and I struck up a friendship. Um, he became, he was very very supportive. Um, when I was streaming on whatnot, he was at almost every stream. You know, um, I do claim sales. He's always there. We wheels whatever. He's always very supportive. We had a, a great friendship, and then um. Kelly started disappearing a little bit here and there. He owns a a, a fencing business, so he works a lot. And okay. He's out in, out in the country, and so you know people fall away from the hobby a little bit because they get real busy with real life. And I kind of thought that's what was going on with Kelly until he messaged me and told me that uh, his son was ill, and his son has cancer, and so you know his wife's been spending a lot of time at the hospital. Oh man! And um, so obviously she hasn't been working. Right. Right. Like uh, she's staying at the hospital with the son. Like, how do you work? You know? And so Kelly, Kelly's working all these hours. He's burning himself out. The hospital's hours away, you know, a lot of uh, mental and financial stress on their family. So uh, we put together a little fundraiser and uh, we gave away this whole list of prizes. List them off. Um, Talk about it. List them off. Tell us what you get. The Nintendo 64 drawers, <clears throat> the double drawers that have that hold 24 cartridges. Did I win gave, that? No, you didn't. Gave oh. away six sets of those. Fuck. A, a Nintendo <laughs> case to hold your console and everything back okay. from like 1986. We gave away one of the Wii Xeno mods, a uh, custom one of one D, uh, Game Boy DMG, um, a bundle of games. Uh, a couple 3D printed giant uh, Game Boy cartridges, Lego Racer CIB for Nintendo 64, Carmageddon Nintendo 64, Doom PS4, um, some toys, uh, another mod, uh, modded Game Boy DMG, and another bundle of games that uh, had Super Mario 3 in it. So uh, we had about, um, I would say, $1,500 in prizes. Okay. Uh, no, and, and I put the post out there to the group, and I'm like, this is what we're doing. This is what we're raising money for. And um, so I put that out there, and uh, I was hoping to bring in $1,000, to be honest. Like, I, I, I told Kelly, I said, I'm going to push this, uh, try to get the group involved, and let's see where we could take it. I'm, you know? Um, yeah. And he's like, you know, any anything helps out. And obviously that's true. So uh, we ended up having $3,000 in pledges. Oh, that's amazing. 
Um, Congratulations. Unfor- uh, unfortunately, you don't always get a hundred percent of the pledges in donations. Right. Um, because you know, I, I don't shame people and people like tell me, Oh, you should, if they pledged and they don't put up, you should ban that person from the group or whatever. But that's not the case because you got to look at it realistically. You know, somebody said, I- I'm going to put up $50 and then they blew a tire out on their car. Now they got to buy a tire and they can't put that $50 up. You know, we don't true. know. Ev- we don't know everybody's personal situation Very and then, true. In real life happens to people all the time. And so you can't always, if you say you're going to make a donation, you can't always pull it off. And I understand that. And I don't hate on it. Um, so what we ended up bringing in was $2,800, which is over 90%. So very happy with that number. We generally bring in on any kind of bun- benefit fundraiser we do, we generally bring in 85 to 95%. Uh, I think one time we hit a hundred, one time we only hit uh, 70 and that was, I was very sad about that one. Nice. The next benefit is going to be for the new Bill Tendo Wi-Fi so we can get better <laughs> internet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on, man. I don't have anything on. It's like you're lagging, but you're not, you know what? You got that website up still. Well, let me kill it. Yeah. Kill the website. Kill that bitch. <clears throat> Turn it off on your internet too. Make sure it's off off. Close that whole thing out. Yeah, the whole thing. Just leave the only thing up on your screen is StreamYard. Game on, yeah, baby. That's it. That's mm-hmm. all that's on. It's crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah, my audio doesn't glitch, just my video. Yeah, your video Wait. lags. Your video lags hard. Yeah. yeah I don't a- know why I'm it's not Wi-Fi, dude. I'm fucking plugged in. I know you're on land. That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does this computer have a graphic card inside it? I don't know. You don't know? That's probably why. Is this that is this that gaming PC you showed me? Yes. It does not have a graphic card inside it. Did you buy that graphic card I told you to get? No, I've been Bro, that's investing the in the business. Uh, so I need that graphic card? You need that graphic card. You need that little boost. That's the problem, man. Your All right. PC's probably not handling the uh the stream. I can't believe you got a PC built for the cost you told me they didn't have a graphic card inside it. It's crazy. Crazy. Bill yep. Tendo had a gra- had a PC built about a year and a half ago. He bought it from a company that built it for him. Charged them over $500 for it, right? Yes. Um, I don't want to say the whole price that you paid. Right. For it, over 500 bucks. No graphic card inside it. And I was so- like, Bill, I could fucking build one and give you a popsicle for the same <laughs> price that I'm running on my shit right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag popsicle. Get that batch card. Love that shit. So <laughs> if, you, if you guys just joining in too, tonight's giveaway is going to be a Scuttlebutt's t-shirt. So you missed. You, if you didn't see the uh, uh, Scuttlebutt's, you didn't see the Game Monia t-shirts and the other t-shirts that Bill Tendo selling on his website. Tonight's giveaway is a Scuttlebutt's t-shirt. We're going to give away that later in the show. <laughs> Graphic card is investing in the business. He's not lying. It's going to make your PC run a little bit faster and right. a little bit better. You ain't going to be lagging, baby. Not gonna be lagging. You can so lag that's on dude, no. so awesome news that you were able to do that for her. Twenty eight hundred bucks from donations, fifteen hundred dollars and stuff given away, and all the the fifteen hundred dollars in stuff that was given away was donations too, right? Yes. Perfect. That's amazing, dude. That's super amazing. Really happy that you were able to do that for her. Um, I hope like, it helps out. Any little bit always helps out. Yeah. The only thing that like uh, I think as far as the donations costed out of pocket is the Xeno mod and the custom uh, Game Boy DMG mod because what we did was I put up the Wii, I put up the DMG, Beans is going to mod the Wii to the Xeno mod and he's got to buy the parts to do that, the four terabyte hard drive and stuff. And uh, the winner of the... DMG is Scott Hager. When I get in touch with him tomorrow, I'm going to put him in touch with Beans. Beans is going to build that, and I'm going to pay for all the parts for that out of pocket. So, like, I'd say 90% of the prizes was uh, stuff that people had that they wanted to donate. Uh, I think those two situations are the only things that are out of pocket. And, you know, even, even then, 
Beans and I are going to come in under two hundred dollars or so between us. That's maybe, still nice. Yeah, maybe three hundred. So yeah. to- totally worth it, man. Like, yeah, I already had the Game Boy. I already had the Wii. You know, yeah, it was actually you... one of the Wiis I got from you. Nice, perfect. Yeah, that's so good. I'm happy that I went through a good donation then. Great. Yeah, look at Joel in a, inadvertently contributing. Yeah, right? Without even trying. <laughs> <laughs> I hooked Bill up with five Nintendo Wiis. Early back in December, I was uh, I threw up some Wiimont on my website just to see if they would hit off a little bit. And uh, I didn't sell a single one for two months. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to take them down. They're not selling anything. Bill, you can have them. So what did um, I fill with them? <sighs> You're, 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 you're lagging, baby. You're lagging. <laughs> Fix it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> because uh, we're on the opposite. On I would, first. Oh, yeah. that, that's my wife that said that. Is it? Yeah, that's Dallas. Because he was in the fucking bathroom taking a massive shit, and I'm like, "Yo, I'm going live." <laughs> <laughs> and I told the entire thing. I told the entire chat that Bill Tendo's taking a massive shit. He'll be here in a few minutes because of that delicious pasta you made. It, it, dude. There's a just a little bit of pork in the meatballs, and I'm telling you, uh, that did it. In is, pork is really messing with my stomach lately. I think it's just because I'm old. Well, you know, it's kind of like you develop a little bit of a lactose tolerance, too, when you get older, man. If I take a sip of coffee with, with milk in it, instant bathroom. Instant bathroom, man. Totally instant bathroom, man. Look how fast that machine's going. I love how fast that thing moves. It's fantastic. It's mesmerizing to me. Oh, dude. So that's great, dude. So um, let me show. Dude, I want to show my like unbuild, dude. It's it's pretty much done. Dude, check this out. Is it, is this your gun box? Not or, the gun box. No, that full-size Jurassic Oh, the full arcade? Yeah, let's take a look at that beautiful bitch. Dude. Let me pull this up. The Walking Dead arcade game got released today on an emulator called Technoparrot. Right. And it's a, a what Technoparrot has this paid subscription. And so it's a paid subscription game. But I got my hands on it today, and I added it to this build. Not only that, this actually has the Raw Thrills Jurassic Park game on it, too. And Ooh, so that right that there, is, I know, man, dude, those graphics are so good. So yes, good. Do the, this place, Jim, Un- Jim's underground that does my graphics for me, man. Uh-huh. I can't believe how sexy they come out. I mean, that is just absolutely sexy. And those light guns inside it are a 24 volt recoil. So they bang, man. I call them the clappers when they, when they hit, it's just clapping. Is it, are those sendings? No, those are not Sindens. These are Gun for IR. Oh, those that's like, the Gun for IR. Those okay. like, this is this is the most expensive build that I can offer, right? I have lower end price, lower lower price your builds, guys. My regular thirty two. This is a thirty two inch full size like an arcade. My normal thirty two inch like an arcades are thirty two hundred bucks, and they come with what's called Gun for IR, and they have twelve volt recoils inside it, but they're not top sliders. They're just a recoil inside the gun. Thirty two hundred bucks for a ten eighty p for that. This is a $5,000 arcade. Why is it a $5,000 arcade? Because those two light guns inside it cost $2,000. Yeah. They're real time crisis light guns modified with gun for IR and 24, 24 volt recoils inside it. They're brand new. They have only been used by the guy who made them and myself from testing it. That's it. So when the customer gets it, they're fresh light guns right off the market, man. So the guy who runs Gun for IR or builds the Gun for IR, I should say, his name's Ray from RPEG Electronics. He orders those Time Crisis guns brand new, gets them in, guts them, puts the Gun for IR technology inside them, and then sells them off. They are nine hundred dollars each plus tax. And he lives in he he's he lives in New York, so we're paying New York state taxes. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so they're two thousand dollars just for those guns, man. This also has pedals, so the pedals aren't shown in the pick because I didn't set the pedals up yet. But they're getting time no, crisis re- phone pen pedals reload too. pedals. Yeah, just like time crisis. These are time yeah. time crisis pedals. So this thing, 
I am so proud of this, and this is why I wanted to show everybody tonight because I'm so fucking proud of this build, man. This is my first light gun cab off of my CNC machine. I have plenty of light gun cabs that I've built in my time, and this is one of my best sellers. And now I can provide this to the community, my own original design and right. my own original design on the my on the Jurassic Park graphics too, man. I yeah. I fucking love this thing. I don't even want to. Sh I don't want to ship it. I don't want to ship it, dude. There's the Walking so, Dead game. <laughs> I, not not a joke. I know exactly what you're saying because I sold one of my kiosk and it sat on my table and I kept playing with it and I did not want to ship it. Right. And I'm like, I I got to I got to ship this out. I got to. It went to yeah. Nick it went to Nick Corn. Did it? Yeah. Good for and, Nick. I hope he does that, man. Oh, dude, he loves it. He said it's amazing. He's really really happy with it. But I really didn't want to get rid of it. He purchased my um uh my Turok 2 not for resale. He bought that off me. So shout out to Nick for that too, man. Oh I yeah, I forgot that. about that. Yeah, Nick Nick Nick's an awesome dude. Good dude, man. So so 32 inch full size like an arcade. It's 74 inches tall with the casers on it. It's 70 inches tall without the casers on it. Um 14 inch LCD marquee. Um that also can be upgraded to a 28 inch marquee. 28 inch LCD marquee, but you got to pay the difference on that. So it's a $400 LCD. It's 400 bucks for a 28 inch LCD marquee. And then I 3D printed the um, speaker grills. I tried to get the Jurassic Park logo on the speaker grills, and I just couldn't get I it couldn't, right. I couldn't get it right, man, at all. You, I even you, I even you, printed you, out a test print too, and I just I just couldn't get it right. So I'm like, and it was nine hours to print the grill like that, and I'm like, that's just too long. I made those graphics. That's that's a fresh graphic for me. So I designed those graphics, and then I sent them to my local guy, Underground Car Wraps, to just print it. Otherwise, I designed that whole thing. I designed so, all of my graphics. So the difference between this this gun cab and uh, the ones you've done in the past is, before you were built buying the parts for the shell the, cat, the shell yeah. and uh assembling the shell that you purchased and now you're making your own from scratch yeah i'm fantastic cutting the shell right off the cnc cutting the wood cutting the team molding slots putting it together applying the graphics putting the team molding on it and then putting the yeah. whole thing together man doing yeah, look, the screw holes and everything like but, like i told you yeah because you and i have discussed uh with screws and you yep. know attachments Dude. and glues and this all of that stuff. Solid. huh it's the, the, thanks to you and your contributing to suggestions this this cabinet is solid as fuck dude well i did spend 30 years as a carpenter <laughs> yeah so, um whereas i might sh believe it or not and people don't always believe this but i actually uh struggle with software concepts sometimes um because i'm more of a mechanically na natured person because i spent 30 years working as a carpenter doing physical labor but i did learn right. things like how to attach things properly you know give it the proper support and all that i i know all the little details you know right. and so uh you help me with software stuff i'm gonna help you with some hardware stuff <laughs> Absolutely. So this arcade, so the side piece of this arcade, my my CNC machine is a 33 by 30 cutting 33 by 33 cutting area, which is really only a 32 by 32 cutting <coughs> area, cutting area. So this side is cut into three different pieces. And as you see how the graphics laid on there, you see no seam. And the graphic is also covering the screw holes. You don't see any screw holes either. I completely sealed all that off completely sealed all of it off so you can see if you look over here to the left you can see the seam right there that's the only seam you're going to see is on the inside of it right there you're not going to see another one right <laughs> uh i, so I don't this, though, i don't i don't think anybody realizes how much uh you and i are constantly like talking and working things out whether it's one of my situations or one of your situations or oh yeah you know all day, every day. Uh, Literally all day, every day. Him and yeah. I are back to back. Back yeah, to back, man. Always a ton of uh, input from each other. We we work on a lot of, uh, 
we collaborate a lot. <laughs> we do. We do. Collaborate I, I trust a lot. Joel's opinion on a lot of things. He trusts mine on a few things. So, uh, you and know. Bill knows I'm very critical. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very critical, man. Very critical. I'm a cheerleader, but I can be very critical, and I always think of the just in case factors too. Yeah, um, and also, um, I have a a tendency to be a cheap bastard in every day of my life. Um, and Joel tells, he, he gets on me about it. Oh, dude. And I've screwed myself a couple times. Dude, because, I already. Because oh, I was cheap about something. Uh, whoever this Facebook user is, I already beat you to it, man. Uh, be, that's, Jake, to it. that's Jacob Griffin. Jacob Griffin. I already make linked Mario Kart arcades. They're on my website. They're what? Website. Yep. Hang on. Let me see. I don't, you know, let me, let me, let me pull up my website. Pull it the fudge up. Because I, I I did the gallery today, and it should be if it's not in the gallery, it should be you'll at least go to see Link Daytona's. But I do have Mario Kart um, Retro Lizard Custom Marquees. I'm like try, trying to think of my website name as I'm talking at the same time. Um, if I don't have Link Mario Karts set up on there already, then we already have. I have the graphics for it already. The site can't be reached. You want me oh, to wait. Pull I it up? No, I forgot the S. No, you don't pull it up. You're gonna start lagging. There Fuck we go. I, for, I didn't put the S in there. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, hang on. Let me pull up. Let me share the screen over here on this one now. Present. Stop screen. Present. Share screen. Gallery. There we go. All right. So we got Link Daytona's right here. All right. So this Daytona. is what it would look. Daytona. You're going to do the Daytona episode of uh, the N64 podcast with us, right? They're, or what? is it cruising? Cruising. I'm doing cruising. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, cruising. Yeah, so plenty of linked, plenty of linked systems going on here, man. I got 65 linked games on my racers. So each one of these racers would have 195 racing games for single player. Plus 65 linked racing games each. So we have Daytona linked up. I have four of five Mario Karts linked. The only Mario Kart I don't have linked is the American version of Triforce, which is Mario Kart GP. But I have Mario Kart DX for Techno Parrot, uh, which is the Japanese version of the arcade version, linked up. I have Mario Kart Double Dash linked. I have Mario Kart 8 on switch linked and i have the wii version linked so we got gamecube gamecube wii um switch and techno parrot arcade version so i'm trying to find the mario kart arcade there's one right here on the right so it's cut off but there it is and that is the arcade version that's on the screen of it too I'm trying to find one with the graphics on it <clears throat> what it's about time you put up a gallery. I know, right? So there's yeah. right there. There's Mario Kart GP2. That's a Triforce version. That's not linked. Um, but that's still a fun ass game to play. And then we got two Mario Karts right there, man. We got a Mario Kart. If you go to my website, actually, you're on the website, right? So let me go over to my product collections. Product collections. And then we got where's the racing arcades? Racing arcades. And then we have full-size racing arcade we have the mario kart version uh does it show the picture here it is mario kart it's a me it's a mario that's not i wanted to zoom out can't zoom well, joel, do it. joel but, can you all right so my wife might not be into this, but hear me out on it. Can you make me a racing cab that's also a bed? Yeah. The size of a California king. Fuck wait, yeah, I can. We have, wait, we have a regular king. So, have, Fuck yeah, I can. <laughs> Absolutely, I can. <laughs> we'll fucking attach that bitch right to the headboard. And fucking you'll fucking sit reverse cowgirl and fucking play that shit. Uh, we don't have a headboard anymore. Well, you're about to have one now with two LCD screens inside <laughs> it. That's what's up. And we can even get detachable wheels for it, too, if needed. 
So yeah, so there's the Mario Kart version. We got Mario Kart, Batman Cruise in USA, Daytona USA. I'll have a couple of my own designs too um, that I want to put up there also. The Mario Kart is going to be a little redesigned because I'm building my own racing cabinets now. This is the old style. Instead of it being two separate pieces, it's going to be one full piece. So that's going to be the difference in it. It's pretty much going to look exactly the same, but it's going to be one whole full piece, completely solid, and about 60 inches tall. So nice. yeah. We do that. I do it all, man. I do racing. Nice. I do pinball. I do it all, man. So, hell yeah. Go on my go to my YouTube channel and you can check out the link videos. I have a link video coming. Oh, up dude, you got some awesome videos on there just showing how shit operates. I that's go on there and watch it sometimes. Dude, that's the whole reason why I even made a YouTube channel. I literally hated YouTube for years, and then I'm like, I, I started building these arcades, and my customers started having questions, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should make a video and put it on YouTube for you. And they're like, yeah, that would be really helpful, actually. And that's what I did. And every th since then, I started making videos for just about every build that I do. That's where it comes out. And then I make Game Onia live videos with you, baby. That's right. We talk about that pasta noodle. Got them noodles going, son. Get that noodles going, baby. Got that noodles going. What else you got up your sleeve? Uh, not, not no. much, you know. Did you go? I, I've been... Doing a shit ton, so I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, like, this week has been the most stressful week of my life. Yeah? Yeah, because I have, like, ten of those quests to ship out. They're sitting in a stack right over there. And uh, I was just so stressed about it. So, you know, it yeah, is, but... it is but... what it is. Dude, my man, <laughs> I've done it all. Joel, here, all right, here's the I'm, vision. Can we do a Biltendo and Retro Lizard collab cabinet that is a horror cabinet? Just, yeah. just horror games and... Horror games? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just spooky shit. Yeah, I got, I actually have a horror build coming up for a pedestal, but I could do a horror, horror theme games. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. Um, I, but yeah, if you, uh, whoever the Facebook user is, if you go to my website and go to the gallery, go down and click on my pedestal arcades Let me pull and you'll up. see the resident evil pedestal arcade that I made. And for the guy asking if I have recommendations for a CNC machine, I do. Shapoko. S H I'll type it in the fucking chat. I don't think Sh that's a real it, word. So I was calling it Shapioko because that's how it's spelled. Uh, that's Jacob Griffin again. Yeah, Jacob. So it's spelled Shapioko, but it's pronounced Shapoko. So they are the most convenient machines that you can get for your stuff, for your garage, because it runs off 120 volts and it runs off. You have to buy the router separately. So you can buy a DeWalt router or a Makita, and it all runs off 120 volts. So you're not running right. the 220 lines straight to the machine, which is also fantastic. And the reason being is because when you're, when you're using the CNC machine, you're going to fuck up. Right. I'm not going to lie. You're going to fuck up. Right. And when that board moves and that router bit is catching on that board and it's clanking and it's about to snap or it's just like about to start a fire because it's going so fast and it's stuck. Um, you can just kill the you can kill the router and then you can kill the you can kill the Z axis on it separately. So, yeah. So check out Shapoko. I'm actually going to be upgrading mine to a 48 by 48. What was that? Was that your belly? No, it's my dogs. Oh, I thought that was your belly growling, growling at me. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's my dog. I told you my wife hangs out in the living room. I know she does, man. I'm fucking with you. She plays with the dogs. And she, look, them dogs is cal calm as hell all day with just me here, right? right? My wife gets home. They are ape shit until they go to sleep. And I tell her all the time, it's because she has chaos energy. And they feed <laughs> off of that. I'm like, you got... I got napping energy. You know right. what I mean? Like I lay on the couch and all the dogs like come. <laughs> That's because you're old as shit, dude. And they all lay on me. And my wife, she she yeah, I'm old as shit. She's young, she's beautiful, but she's got that chaos energy to her. You know? Yeah. My uh my cat does that. My cat goes crazy when my wife's around, but when I'm it's just me, the cat's like right here just chilling. Well, I say she's young. We're the same age, but for some reason, I look like I'm 10 years older. Aren't you like 60? No. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I am I am 47 though. And uh Patrick, Congrats you on being almost we already 50. talked about food. Uh we did. We did. <clears throat> oh man. So yeah. We do a lot of shit, man. It's been a week though. It definitely yeah, been, a week. It has. It's been a week. My shipping I'll... got my shipping got screwed up this week with my arcades. Uh-huh. Uh but they'll be going on on Monday. So my helper called in all week. So I got no helper this week. It is so what it is, it. man. It, yeah, it is what it is. It's been a week. But you know what? No down and it's all fun, man. It's Wednesday. The week's halfway over with. My one daughter's got the next two days of school off. My four, my five-year-old. It's just me and her. So, bro, that's daddy-daughter time two days in a row like that. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to take that kid to mini golf. Because she oh, ain't I never love, been mini golfing yet. Dude, I love mini golf. Yo, and she, my kid, that kid is chaotic. So she's going to get mad and she's going to chuck that putter halfway across the room. And I'm going to love it. I, they, if anybody from mini golf places watched me play, they'd kick me out. Because you're aggressive? Are you uh, happy Gilmore in the fucking thing? No, but I will chip it. You will chip it? <laughs> I, I, say it constantly. I say it constantly. I'm going to chip it. And look, <laughs> this is not a joke. Let me grab a marker real quick so you can see this. We was on this one hole that looked like this. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, he's drawing it up. We're getting a diagram here. Let me see the mini golf by Bill Tendo. All right. So we was on a hole like this, and that was the starter. The, okay. That was the T. Yeah. And then that was the hole. And I, not a joke. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to chip it. And she's like, knock it off with the fucking chipping it shit. And I chipped it, dude. And right over that little gap, hole in one. <laughs> chipped it in. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's definitely fucking awesome. What does that say in retro chat instead of Bill Chat? Howdy. What's up, man? Welcome to the Retro Lizard. Welcome. Welcome. So, uh, uh, well, I wonder if Dallas was the only one weirded out that for the first half we were on the wrong side. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I got to put my hat back on because I look weird without it. Uh, me too, but I take mine off sometimes. Don't take your hat off. Okay. So I think Ghostbusters Frozen Empire on Saturday. How was that? It was all right. It wasn't as good as Afterlife. Um, and it was kind of fast. I kind of feel like that they could have did a it could have been a little bit longer. Like if it was a two and a half hour movie, I wouldn't have been mad. Even if it was like maybe two hours and ten minutes, I wouldn't have been mad. But uh yeah. Um it was pretty good. Uh, it's, it was probably like I give it like a six and a half, seven. Out of all the Ghostbuster movies, right? It was, it was okay. There was some stuff. I hope that when they release it to to Blu-ray and DVD, that we get an uncut version, like the extended version, because I feel like that they cut out a lot of things <clears throat> that would have made the movie better. Uh, which is just kind of explaining a few things. So I don't want to give anything away. Definitely go watch it. Uh, definitely watch the movie when it comes out. Um, on streaming or Blu-ray or whatever you guys are going to do or take your kids to go see the movie. But uh, it definitely was not as good as Afterlife. <laughs> and my wife is sick of watching that movie, by the way. My my five-year-old loves Ghostbusters right now, and she's all about Afterlife. Uh, and we watched it like, what, dude, it's on like three times a day right now. Okay, so <laughs> while we're talking about sequels, let me say 100%, I am not a fan of unnecessary sequels. Every movie does not need a motherfucking sequel. I right? agree. Agreed. And so it frustrates me to no end that we get fucking unnecessary sequels. We get unnecessary remakes. If you're going to remake a movie, remake one that didn't have a budget to begin with. Like Logan's Run was a phenomenal movie for the garbage special effects it had. Had a great story. I would love to see a new Logan's Run. If you're going to make a mo- remake a movie, make one that didn't get the attention it deserved the first time. Right? Right. So all of that bullshit aside, motherfucker, do I want to see the new Beetlejuice? So do I, I. mean, we, we got Winona Ryder back, yeah. Michael Keaton back, Catherine O'Hara back. Yeah. Uh, the dad can't come back because he's a convicted fucking diddler. But <laughs> fuck that guy. But, you you know, no Gina Davis or Baldwin, but we don't need them. They're not integral to the story because it's isn't, a new chapter. Isn't Gina Davis dead? No, Gina Davis isn't dead. Are you sure she's not dead, or did she, oh, just, fall, did she just fall off the rails? Johnny Mnemonic. Man, Henry Rollins was a fucking king in that movie. 
You know, I seen that movie when I was a kid, and it's one of those I have to rewatch it as an adult because I didn't get it, and I don't really remember it. Was it Morgan Freeman in that? I don't remember Morgan Freeman. You don't remember and Johnny Morgan. Mnemonic. I don't no, think so. maybe I don't, yeah, maybe oh, I'm thinking of something Okay, else. so hold on. Let me jump on this real quick. Motherfucker, you just touch a nerve. Let me let me let me tell you about this. So my grandmother got me into comic books, horror movies, sci-fi movies, uh, sci-fi fantasy novels, everything that is cool in this world that makes me the nerd that I am. My grandmother taught me because she okay. was fucking phenomenal. Okay. And one of the things she did was she was a heavy, heavy reader. Right. And yeah. so she gives me, she would, she had all these sci fi and fantasy novels and she would buy them and read them and then give them to me. And I would read them. And up until Katrina, I had like 2,000 books, dude. Yeah. Not, yeah. We talked about this. The guy, you lost it in the flood. Yeah. Yeah. Not just comics, but I'm talking novels and yeah. I had read most of them. But one of those that made uh, a, a really big impact on me was a book called The Pridane Chronicles. And the Pridane Chronicles, you should definitely check it out if you like fantasy books. Um, it's really interesting, but it's a combination of five books that were published, five small books. And the second or third one in that series is actually the fucking Black Cauldron. And the Black Cauldron is one part of a grand epic story. And although it looks like, and it, who's going to bed? And although it looks like it's going, it, it's a beginning, middle, and end contained story, it is, but it's not. It's like um, if you read The Hobbit, The Hobbit is a self contained story, but there's so much more to it, right? right? Right. So The Black Cauldron, look at it like that, except it'd be the prequel to, there's a prequel to it, and then there's three sequels after it. You okay. know, it, it's it is awesome as the Black Cauldron is, and as much as I enjoyed it, it's only one part of this grand epic called the Pridane Chronicles. Was there a movie about it? Only the Black Cauldron. Disney made an animated movie in like the late 70s, early 80s, and it wasn't very good. No, it wasn't very good at all. It was a terrible Disney movie back in the day? Yes. Okay. So that needs a remake then, huh? Or yeah. could use a reboot, remake. Absolutely, you want to call absolutely. It. I would, I would love. Uh... You know, on the remake reboot topic here, I watched fucking um, Roadhouse. Oh yeah, I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, it wasn't movie of the year. Um, it was nothing like the first one, and I went in with an open mind. Um, it was nothing like the first one. It wasn't supposed to be anything like the first one. It was a completely different story. Um, the only basis was. The only thing that linked it back to the first one was the name of the bar called the Roadhouse. That was it. Otherwise, it was a little far-fetched in a few scenes. Jake Gyllenhaal made me laugh a lot, actually. Uh, especially the first actual fight scene he had at the bar. I It caught my attention, and it kind of made me sit up and pay more attention to the TV than what you know the first 15 minutes of the movie was doing. And uh, yeah, it was, it was decent. It was definitely decent. It's worth a watch. So, but don't expect it to be anything like the first movie because it's not. So, and I, you know, I remember why I hate Conor McGregor. I don't like the guy at all. Never did. But he played a psychopath really well. But I just, I don't like the way he walks. Something about, it's the way that he walks that annoys the fuck out of me, actually. Because he walks like he's holding luggage with his fist closed and his arms don't move. So he's literally walking like this. Look at me, Bill. He's literally walking. Yeah, like I know how he walks. It's you know weird. what I mean? It's fucking. It's weird, and I hate it, and it just annoys the fuck out of me. So, so decent movie though. If you got Amazon Prime, it's free. Give it a watch. So, um, while somebody mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. all right, just real quick, the book after Lord of the Rings is called The Cimmerillion, and it's actually a prequel, and it reads like fucking stereo instructions. It's very hard to read, but uh, it's it's like a Bible of Middle Earth. And it was written after Lord of the Rings, but whatever. Anyway, did you, did you watch the Lord of the Rings show on Amazon? No, dude, watch that. Um, so a, a good buddy of mine tells me one time, my my <laughs> brother, is. yeah, a little bit. Um, he said my brother is an author, and I'm like, okay. And so he was writing D and D books, but couldn't use D and D. 
because it's trademark. So right. he started writing these books under the name Caverns and Creatures. But what they are is they're novels, adventure novels of people that got sucked into a D and D game. And okay. it, and so it's Jumanji, it, but D and D. Yes, yes, That's and cool. he's been publishing them for years. <laughs> um, he's got about two dozen books now. I have probably five of his first novels all autographed on my shelf, and I'm going to share that. Very nice. Uh, his name is Robert Bevan. I'm good friends with his brother Kenny. Have been for years. Um, but one of the book series he writes is Critical Failures. Um, and, you know, he, he's got like all kinds of stuff. Nice. That's cool. I'll check that so, out. CF10, that's Critical Failures. But like, you know, is he's he going got... into book 10? Uh, on that series. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so, it, dude, look, let's be honest. It's right up our alley because it's people that guys that were playing the D and D game and got sucked into it because they made fun of the DM. And so the DM's trying to shit on them while they're really living through this thing, but it's all dick and fart jokes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <it> really? <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. I, I don't know how to categorize it other than the dick, uh, and fart joke. dick and fart jokes. Okay. You know, and it's the scuttlebutts of literature. Yes. And it really is. And it's uh, a lot of, a lot of your mom's a whore, you know. Like, yeah. You, you, oh, like oh, look at that stable girl over there. Your mom's a stable girl, you know. Like, <laughs> you, you know, you know what I mean. Like, it, I do, it, yeah. It, it, it it's <clears throat> sophomoric humor wrapped in nerdery, yeah, and right. so it makes it very easily digestible, very enjoyable. You read extremely quickly through the books. If I have any complaint about them. That's the complaint is that they're so easy to read and get a chuckle here and there, every other page that you go through them too quickly. And then you're like, fuck, is that all there is? Okay. And, you and know, you're, you, you're waiting for more. And then you're 10 books deep, you know? <laughs> all right. I'll check that out. Definitely. Without a doubt. Uh, but bringing up Dungeons and Dragons and sequels, a movie yeah. that doesn't need a sequel is the Dungeons and Dragons movie that came out. Was it last year or the year before? Yeah, it was okay. Pine. I loved it. I thought I, it was... I, I thought it was complete. Yeah, you know? me too. Yeah. I don't think it needs a sequel at all. It was a movie that wasn't linked to anything at all. It was a nice way to go to the movies and not have to watch a fucking superhero movie. And yes. it was a movie that did not take itself seriously, period. Right. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I really enjoyed it. So and I, I don't want a sequel to it. Don't make a sequel to that movie. That and Barbie. Don't make a sequel to Barbie. I don't I need never a sequel saw, to that. I never saw Barbie. My wife watch said it. I should watch it. If I get around to it one day, if I just happen to watch it, I will. Um, right now, I'm on one of my old standbys. I have a very specific uh, favorite movie trilogy, and it's not one you would ever guess. If I haven't ever told you before, you would never guess it. Debbie Does Dallas. No. Debbie does Dallas 2000. Debbie does Dallas 22, 2015. No. No? It's the Cube Trilogy. The Cube Trilogy? Yeah. Have I you ever seen heard of that? Ah. So, ah. You know, on my YouTube channel, <laughs> I do a series, and I just post them sporadically, Forgotten Sci-Fi, and it's science fiction, books, movies, and TV shows that people don't really talk about enough, right? Right. Um, that deserve more credit. And I like to talk about them. And the first one I ever did was actually Cube because I love Cube so much. Cube is um, very, it's, if you had to pigeonhole it, it's almost uh, hard to pigeonhole because it is a one room movie. It is a sci-fi movie. It is a horror movie. So When did this come out, 80s? Uh, no, in, in early 2000s really and, yeah and then they had cube 2 hypercube and then they had cube zero was the third one which was actually a prequel to the first one and now but oh let me get into this i went on a serious emotional roller coaster last night because i'm on amazon 
because they're all streaming on Amazon. And I see Cube 2021 under movies you might like. And I'm like, fuck, I would like that. Amazon knows a little bit too much about me. If they recommend <laughs> a Cube movie, I never fucking heard of. So I put it on. And all it is, and I'm going to watch it because I'm going to make a Forgotten Sci-Fi comparison video. It's sure. a Japanese remake of the first American Cube movie. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's on Amazon? Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. Free. Okay. Is it free? Uh, yes. So, you, it Cube is the first one. The second one is Cube 2 Hypercube. The third one is Cube Zero, which actually ends up being a prequel. Mm -hmm. But you got to watch it third or else it wrecks the whole thing for you. Okay. You, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, I'll tell you uh, two things that I really love about it. Number one is it's a one-room horror movie. Right. I just uh, read that, actually. Yeah. So I'm a really, really big fan of one-room movies. My uh, my wife makes fun of me because I like low-budget sci-fi, the right. cheesy stuff, because then you really have <clears throat> to lean on the writing. The writing has to be good if you have a bad budget, right? Right. So Cube is basically endless rooms, but they're all the same room, and they might have traps in them, they might have this in them, they might have that in them but it's still just one room that they filmed in. Right. All right. So um, much like the original Saul was a one room movie. So this Which director the original Saul was fantastic. Yeah. So the, the director of this actually wrote and directed a short film in Canada two years before this. And that's how he got to make cube and it's called elevator. And it is starring the first acting, uh, the first acting job of David Hewlett who also was in Cube because of that. Most people only know David Hewlett as Rodney McKay from Stargate Atlantis, main cast member for the entire series. He's the head scientist. Okay. Um, never watched it, but okay. Okay. I know, um, you know what, though? I never watched it because i never seen the Stargate movie. You don't need to see the Stargate movie. Start uh, Stargate SG-1, Children of the Gods. You don't need the movie. Okay. Uh, the series I was never is, interested in the movie. <laughs> yeah, the, the series is pretty disconnected, and yeah. for people like me, a lot better than the movie. Right. Um, so uh, they they made Cube, and it, it you know for the budget that they had, they hired the best possible actors that they could, and did the best special effects that they could, and you know maybe everything doesn't hold up as well now, right? But it's still super enjoyable to watch. Okay. I'm going to check that out. I like one of movies, too. I like movies like that. Like, uh, what was that Guillermo del Toro movie? Where they Guillermo were del Toro? Yeah, I can't say his name. Where, where they Pan's were... Labyrinth? No, not that one. The one where they were in the... No, the one where they were in the elevator. Oh, Devil. Yeah. Yeah. That one. You know, it's one of those movies you only got to watch it once, but yeah. it was good. So, like, Cube scratches an itch for me because I like sci-fi. I like yeah. sci I, I like low budget sci-fi because again the writing has to be good. I like horror and I like one room movies because right. again the writing has to be good for a one room movie. Since we're talking about sci-fi here, there is such a thing as horror movies that have sci-fi in it, right? Yeah, horror so, sci-fi sci horror is a genre like Event it Horizon. Is. I was just going to ask you, would you consider Event Horizon a Absolutely. horror movie, a horror movie, or would you consider it a sci-fi movie? Um, Because I don't it, really like intertwining so, the two of those. So, okay, that that's fair, because if the, the way because, you're looking at it is Jason X, Jason in space, that's garbage. That's garbage, that's, yeah. So, but we're, that's, I mean, we're not really comparing it to that. So, so let's, let's be what clear I, about oh, what Event Horizon was. What Are I'm you a fan of Hellraiser? Fuck yeah, I'm a fan of Hellraiser. Event Horizon opened a portal to the Cenobites universe. Right, and I get that. And that's where the sci-fi comes in. You know what I mean? Because it's opening portals, it's doing shit like that. Right. So I get that. So when I watch a movie like Event Horizon, I don't think it's a horror movie. I just think it's a sci-fi movie. Why can't it be because, both? Why can't sci-fi? Because, because sci-fi leads into things like that, and sci-fi has does, things like that in its own it? universe. It does. It in, has hard, been... in hard sci-fi, you don't have those things. Have you ever seen the movie Leviathan? Yes, I did. I think that's a sci-fi movie, not a horror movie. What do you think of... Aliens? 
Aliens is a sci-fi horror. I think it's just sci-fi. I don't think it's horror. When the first time somebody told me that that was a horror movie, I was like, what are you talking about? It's a horror movie. That's a sci-fi movie. And they were like, no, it's horror because of all the death and shit inside it. And I'm like, no, it's just a sci-fi fucking movie. That's just, that's the other side of sci-fi. There's like the Star Wars and the Dune side. Yeah. And then there's the yeah, that's, that's and then there's the sci-fi. other side. There's the dark sci-fi, and I just right. think it's like a dark sci-fi. I don't oh, think it's horror okay. at all. Uh, what I, kind of movie? What kind of movie would you say Steel Magnolias is? Never seen it. I mean, if you had to guess, right off Steel the top Magnolias, of the Magnolias, just the name of the movie. Yeah. It sounds like a drama movie. Like it sounds like a okay. dramatic movie. Sounds like a romantic drama. Not. Yeah. Ro- I wouldn't say romantic. It just sounds like a drama movie. See, I don't. I don't think that there's romance drama. I just think that it's just drama. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. like like a like a bridges over Madison County. I just oh, think I, that I never I just, watched that. But that would be an example of romance, ro- a romance movie or a romance drama. So and if, I just think it's if, just drama. So if romantic comedies, rom coms, can exist as a genre, why can't sci fi horror see? I just exist think just, as a. I think a it's genre. just comedy. I think Dude, you, you do you know how many movies drop into sci-fi horror? Oh, a lot. But yeah. I think it's just sci-fi movies. That's all. I think that's just a dark side of sci-fi. Chronicles of Riddick, sci-fi. Uh, action sci-fi. See, I just think it's sci-fi. Whereas, whereas Pitch Black was sci-fi. sci-fi horror. I think it's just sci-fi. Because sci-fi is aliens. And they're I, on an alien planet. And what do aliens do? They kill I, you. Yeah, but I feel like you're not giving credit to the horror aspects of it properly. Um, I mean, that's where you're I being say. hunted by monsters. That's, that's horror. That's horror movie. Yeah. So if that, so answer me a question: If that was happening in the main wilderness, would it be a horror movie or a sci-fi movie? Where the all these? Wilderness? Okay, so if they're in the wilderness in Maine, right, and they're and they're being hunted by all these creatures and they don't know what the creatures are is that a horror movie or is that sci-fi that's horror okay why just because they're not in space why because they're not in space so, because you're on earth because it's okay so it, it's the same thing you're up. just in a different place it's uh, still it's still a sci-fi horror movie what do you the, you the change descent. the location do you think the descent is a sci-fi horror movie the descent yeah because of I, those little creatures underground. I would actually, I would think that would be more of a fantasy horror because uh, it's uh, fantastical creatures here on Earth. See, I think it's just horror. Could, yeah. Okay. I don't know. That's just that's just kind of like the argument that I have, or not an argument, but it's like a debate that I have with. I actually, my brother, uh, we were talking about stuff like that. I just think that those are just sci-fi movies, man, and nah. that's just a that's just a horror movie to me. I mean the whole subgenre. I get the whole subgenre. All right, I, I need. Do. I, I get need, it. I, need to, I just classify it as that. Like I, I need the chat to weigh on in on this. <clears throat> yeah, chat. Get interactive it, with this. What do you let think? let us know? So seriously, do you agree with Joel here that it's just horror, or do you agree with me that sci-fi ge- horror is a is a legitimate genre of its own? I don't say that it's not a legitimate genre. I just don't classify it personally when I'm watching these types of movies like that. It really blew my mind the first time somebody told me that Aliens was a horror movie. And I'm like, I never once thought that it was a horror movie. I always thought that it was a sci-fi movie. Exactly. Michael Patrick says, look at Alien. I just think it's just a sci-fi movie. Because you got the alien, he's popping it. What? Why? Because there's gore in it? And there's blood and there's death that makes it a horror movie? Like Dude, I'm just I don't know. Alien is sci-fi horror. If it was sci-fi. happening on Earth and the creatures were, you know, a fucking some weird Check kind of snake. Don't be sci-fi. Because like Alien, it Predator. Do you Predator. think Predator is a horror movie? Action horror, absolute th- action sci-fi horror, absolutely. I think they Predator are is being a sci-fi movie by a monster. They're, I- dude. I- I think Predator sci-fi. I think it was a new genre of sci-fi that was introduced to the world in the 80s. I agree they can be in multiple genres. Yeah, of course. But I also think that sci-fi horror sci-fi horror is a legitimate subgenre that is rife 
for classification. Like when people ask me what Cube's about, I tell them it's a sci-fi horror movie. Jurassic Park. I don't. I never. I, I always consider that like a um, like a fantasy movie because it is fantasy. To me, it is. I never considered it sci-fi. Is that considered sci-fi? Of course it is. It's it's literally science fiction. If we take science and make dinosaurs, which we can't do, but fictionally we can, it is the definition of science fiction. But is it science fiction action? Or is it just science fiction? Or is it sci-fi horror because the dinosaurs are eating you? What's What do you think? I mean, I'm with... I, I think it's, it, it would be sci-fi okay. action horror. Like, it, it's... You could classify it in any one of those categories. Yeah. You're... Yeah. I don't know. I guess we go with the subgenres, or you guys go with the subgenres. I just think it's just sci fi. That's it. Amazing movies, though. Love them. Yeah. Those are just debates, right? This, this, is, this is a debate. And there's yes. no wrong There's no wrong answers here. Except for Joel's all. answers. Fuck you, Joel. Joel, you ass. <laughs> Let's get that giveaway going. We're an hour and 20 minutes from this. What do we want to do as a hashtag? Monday morning? Huh? Um, what do you want to do as a hashtag? Man, let's 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 take it back to episode one, Joel. And you want to do popsicle? Hashtag popsicle. What would Jaws be? Jaws is a horror movie or a slasher flick. Uh, see, how the fuck do I spell popsicle? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, yeah, we're going to give away a Scuttlebutts t-shirt. So, um, put hashtag Popsicle in the chat if you're interested. I need, I also need one person to write in the chat, Joel, you are wrong. No, wait, hang on a second. I gotta, I gotta end it. I gotta, okay, right. No, <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> nope, I, I need it, Joel. I'm telling you, I need it. I don't think I don't think you need it because there's no wrong answers here, man. There's no wrong answers at all. So if you want a Scuttlebutts t-shirt, hit hashtag Popsicle in the chat. Did I spell that correctly? It's sure. not gathering anybody. Um, what are you doing, streamer giveaway tool? B-O-B-C-I-C-O. Oh, you spelled it wrong. Did I? Yes. P O P S I C L E, right? Yes. Yeah, C L E. That's what I thought I did. Popsicle. There we go. All right, we got ten entries instantly. <laughs> ah, Listen, I, I didn't say I was smart. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody did, Joel. Fuck you, man. <laughs> if Sixty P's here. If if you're not bullying your friends, you're not really friends. It's not even see that's not bullying. I think that's just fucking breaking balls and ribbing on them, man. Oh, There's I know. No bullying so, there. So no Dallas bullying. Dallas is telling me at dinner tonight that I bullied Curtis, and I'm like, I don't. I fuck with Curtis because we friends. And she's like, I don't know. I think you bully him a little bit, and I'm like, I do not because I was talking shit about him during the big wheel, and um. I'm like, look, let me tell you something. Me and Curtis both grew up in construction. And I'm like, it is the most toxic environment. So, like, it's we toxic, get... That's fun. <laughs> oh, dude. It, if, if you weak-willed, you ain't gonna last. You no, know what I mean? No, that's true. Yeah, that's you ain't gonna spend true. 30 years of construction and can't no. take a fucking mean joke. You know? So, I, I have a special bond with people that have worked construction and can really take a good ball busting. You know, I think that's why I appreciate you. That some that's why I appreciate you too, man. Because we fucking we bust balls all day long with each other, Yo. all day long. Just don't fucking call me Junior, dude. On that big wheel, every time your name popped up, I was like Joel Jorsky Junior. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's leave this up for a few more minutes. If you want a free Scuttlebutt shirt. From BillTendo.com, the tonight's giveaway. Uh, color of your choice, but preference is pink, by the way. Say words, um, son. That's what's up. Hit that hashtag popsicle. We'll leave this up for one more minute. It's uh, 1024. We'll leave it up to 1026. That's East Coast time, by the way. East Coast! East Coast, what's up? East Coast! East Coast! 
Oh man. You got plans for the weekend? We got going on. You just gonna be fucking around? Um, no. One of one of uh, mine and Dallas's friends wants us to uh, go over for a game night. Are we gonna play Monopoly? Dude, it's not probably... wrong with that. If you are, I like Monopoly. No, no, it's probably something like uh, Cards Against Humanity or something. Oh, see, that shit I hate. No, I'm I'm cool with that. Isn't that the one where you gotta fucking read off the card, then you gotta guess shit or play some stuff out? No. No, I'm thinking of something else, though. No, it, you'll have a card that says uh, something you never want to hear your dad say. Right. And then you, everybody puts down a card, and you basically just vote on who had the funniest one. And it's like, you just put the most inappropriate shit. You'll have a card that says, get your finger out of my ass, or something like that, you know? You should have been nut in a sock. Yeah. <laughs> shit, shit like that. Shit like that. All right, let's spin this bitch and let's see who's gonna win it. I want I want Bill's Mafia to win it. Just because. Because he's Bill's Mafia? Because he's Bill's Mafia, because he's fucking he's both Oh shit, he oh. won! <laughs> <laughs> yes! 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 Congrats to that motherfucker right there. Let's go Bills, man. Let's go Bills. Uh Bill Tundo, what's your email? Hold on, I'm put it in the chat right now. Well, I'm gonna put it on the banner. Oh, okay. Uh W Chapetta at gmail.com. Two P's? Two P's and two T's. At gmail.com. Yep. Bill's Mafia. Send your send that dude an email. And he will get that out to you, man. Quality over speed. Remember that. We're not fast. <laughs> we are quality not. over speed, baby. Congrats on the win, though, man. Congrats. Joel fucking <laughs> called it, bro. I, dude, I jinxed him. He got it. That was Hey great. Matt. I don't care about the Pats. I don't care about the Bills. Saints country, baby. Nobody gives a shit about I'm, the Patriots anymore. Fucking Tom Brady's off the team. Nobody ever gave a shit about the Bills. So uh until now, baby. <laughs> Dude, unless you lived in Buffalo I, <laughs> your entire I, life. I've been to Buffalo and y'all got a whole lot of proud a whole lot of pride in the mediocre ball club. I tell you what. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we do, man. Fuck yeah. We got a whole lot of fucking pride in that shit, dude. We got bills on our cars. We got bills on our lawns. We got fucking bills everywhere, man. We Bro, got every, bills uh, everywhere. Every no. other fucking house has a Bills Mafia sign in the yard. Right here, Mike. <laughs> I got to send this to you real bad, dude. <laughs> you know what I need is a box for it, and I don't have a fucking box for it. Or actually, I might have one right here. Damn. Is it this? And I got no excuse because Bill gave me your address like a week ago, too. Yeah, I got a box right here. Hang on. Let's, let's pack it up. We're going to take this. We're going to put it in here. And we're going to close this box. Hey. And so we go. We gotta. We're gonna see Matthew, this stuff. We're gonna it Matthew now. Cohen. Let me let me tell you something, buddy. Since you threw that who that out there for me, I got something for you. A special secret giveaway for the night. What you? Oh, <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> It's the Kirby with legs, bro. I paid twenty dollars for this so I could give it away. Are you sure? That looks like something out of Pulp Fiction. My wife said this is fucking creepy, and I kind of want to keep it. And it's I'm like, fucking creepy. We are not keeping this. I bought it just to give away on here. Where did you I, get that fucking on, creepy ass thing from? On Etsy, dude. I paid on twenty Etsy? bucks for this thing. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Give it away. You gonna give it away tonight? Oh yeah, I'm giving it. I'm giving it to uh, Matthew Cohen because he said, "Who that? Oh who my that? god, that that's Saint slang. Who that say they're gonna beat them Saints? What the fuck is that? That was the creepiest fucking Kirby I ever seen, dude. What is who don't? <laughs> yeah, I bet that's like a number one seller for that person selling it too. Oh, probably. Let's oh, I take, bet it is, man. Let's take it out the fucking package and look at it. Oh, God. It's so weird. Is it 3D printed? Yes. I could 3D print that. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I know That's... it is. I, I bought it just so I could give it away, dude. That's I... so fucking weird. Wait till you see the next one. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one? 
Oh, it's not Kirby, though. How could it get any creepier than Kirby? Is it just uh, as creepy or is it worse? It's worse. Oh, God. Next week. Next week. Stay tuned for next week. And next Bill's going to show off the creepy fucking 3D printing thing he got from Etsy. I'm, I'm going to give away weird shit randomly if you say something right. If you say something right, you get a giveaway. That's the reward. Yeah. <laughs> yes and no. That's the fucking it de- reward. It fucking depends <laughs> on how you look at it, bro. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god, that's fucking weird. I wish I could just give away some weed. <laughs> <laughs> that would be if, they, if it was only legal to mail it, right? Yeah. Hey, Joel, we should mention that we've been copyright hit for like the last couple weeks in a row, no matter what we do. Oh, uh, we're not going to get copyrighted tonight. We didn't do it. We didn't put anything on tonight that's going to get us no, copyrighted. No music, no video. No. We didn't show anything from fucking YouTube or anything like that. Yep. Nothing like that at all. Yep. No. So, yeah. All right. Let's call it. We're going to call it. It's been an hour and a half. Thank you guys, everybody, so much for watching. Appreciate you guys so much. Bill's Mafia, congratulations on that fucking win with the Scuttlebutt shirts, man. Wear that shit with pride, dude. Wear that shit to a fucking Bill's game. So, all right, guys, we'll see you guys next week, Wednesday night, 9 o'clock. And we're going to end the stream.